in the video, I'm like in the bath going, yeah, Ibaraki, isn't it? And uh, <laughs> they made me cut that line from the video. Wow. Hello and welcome to the Abroad in Japan podcast. Probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broad, and we're joined, as always, by England's top Japan enthusiast, Mr. Pete Donaldson himself. Pete, how the devil are you doing? What's going on over there? Howdy, Chris. Um, something terrible has happened. Oh, you've unsubscribed to Abroad in Japan? No, no. But I, I, I oh. sometimes nearly do that to a lot of people. Or sometimes I'll unsubscribe or I'll sort of um, unfollow them on Twitter by accident. Wait, wait, wait. Um, so I, hope, and, and... <laughs> I hope you've hit the notification bell on YouTube, though, Pete. That's the only thing what, what us YouTubers difference? want now. What's the well, difference between subscribe and the notification bell? Yeah. These days, YouTube just shows you whatever it wants, right? You have right. Got to, and even if you're subscribed, it doesn't mean a thing. You've got to hit subscribe right. and then notification bell. And but that's does that when... mean that the notification will go ding, 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 whenever, no, wherever look... I am on the internet? So no. Chris Broad's dropped a new... Cut. No, probably not. But no. like basically means when I release a video, you'll get notified right. about it somehow. It might be an email, a notif- little notification pop up on YouTube. Right. I don't know, but you'll you'll know about it. Um, and it's kind of got more important now that YouTube just censors and just chooses the content it shows. Uh, yeah, it's kind of made subscribing redundant in many ways. Um, so uh, I've really got to just push as we my hit fifty k on the Abroad Japan podcast uh, channel as well. I know it's, just, it's suddenly the redundant. Fun out of that. Uh. Well, so you hear that, guys? Click <laughs> notification the ding bell. dong bell. Click the notification bell. bell for crying out loud. <laughs> click there, forever hold your peace, crying out loud. <laughs> I realise that. Hit the ding dong bell. No, what Hit is... ding dong bell. What's so bad? What's so terrible, Pete? You haven't actually told Chris, us. Chris, <laughs> my dream of importing a Toyota Century uh, is hanging finally in the balance. Finally oh, in the no. balance. Why? Why? We were Got so the close. Car. It, was, it made its way to the... Um, made its way to the um, ship that it was going to go on. Uh, it was going to make its way, <laughs> it made its way to whatever port, Yokohama, I think. It made its way to Yokohama. And uh, they sent me a couple of pictures. And I'm Uh-oh. like, right, that was not what... <laughs> that <laughs> couple, of, couple, of, <laughs> couple of lights on the dashboard that um, were not in the original pictures. Uh-oh. And my question to the man saying, everything works, isn't it? And, and you know... <laughs> It's, it's everything a, works I, in it. <laughs> in it. Everything works in it. And he said, yeah, in it, it does. And so I bought the car. And then suddenly, when the, the guys who are importing it, the guys who are putting it on the a boat, they, they take a couple of pictures and they're like, a uh, couple, of, couple of little lights on, the old engine light, and the old, a uh, couple, of, couple of other things uh, it seems to be, uh, you know, flirting with. Um, so I went, <laughs> I, what are you doing? You said, you said everything worked. And it was fine. Um, so um, it's had to, the engineers have stepped in. They've had to, I mean, to be fair, I've already paid for the car. By rights, that company should be just popping it on the boat and going, see you later. Uh, but uh, in this situation, they've uh, they, 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 they've um, quite cordially and responsibly um, agreed to uh, get an engineer in to see what the hell's wrong with this car. So, uh, so we'll see. The journey you're... continues. But the, the, more importantly, the car is not on the boat. So you've, you've bought it. It's done. The, the deal's done. You've sent the money. The deal's done, but they're Holy out shit. of goodwill, I presume. Or possible, oh. I mean, because they could get away with just sending it and just got us your fucking problem. But it, like, I'd I'd rather them look at it on that side because obviously there's parts for two whole centuries of it <laughs> to find in Japan. Bearing in mind, <laughs> it never got released anywhere else other than in Japan. <laughs> nah, so uh, I'm, I'll probably go to Yokohama in the next few days. Can I go and look check, at your car? Yeah, go and can check it out. It? Yeah, maybe. Can I go, where where is around. it? Where can I find this car? How do I, I get it? Just at the port, I guess. Just, well, I believe it's next to a big bloody boat. Then it's I'm not going to slash on. the tyres. I'm going to slash the tyres yeah. and break the mirror. <laughs> so when it arrives, it'll Absolutely be a little gift from me. I was like, what's going on there? So they, uh, yeah, so they're, they're, they're looking into that, really. Um, this is very well, upsetting. How long, but, that's uh, insane. Like, how hmm. long does it take to get the car from Yokohama to the UK? That's the longest journey, like one of the world's longest hmm. journeys. Like Yokohama to Southampton. I think it might be a month. It might be two months, but I think I think it's in between a month and two months. I, I believe it takes around thirty days. But oh, it's not too bad. That, that seems that's that oh. seems short. That seems like going full yeah. pelt, but maybe not. Maybe it is two months. But uh, yeah, with, with stuff like that, you just got to, you, you, you're hitting hope, and you just you just forget about it for a couple of months, and then deal with the tax and the MOT registration and the installation of a rear fog light when it arrives. But uh, but yeah, I, wow. I, I I was surprised that they were so amenable to me. Going, can you just get someone to look at that? Because that's annoying. <laughs> 
Because so, I That's might awesome. be taking the ownership of that at Southampton docks and then driving it straight to the skip and getting it oh, crushed. That would be such a sad ending. Travel around yeah. the planet only to end it, up in the, a rubbish skip. The scene skip. would be t- typical. Uh, the scene is so typically Donaldson, but uh, I'll take you it. You never know. You might open up the car, like the, the trunk or the boot of the car when it arrives. You Dead might body. just find uh, Carlos Gain just sitting yeah. there. Hiding yeah. out, yeah. Somebody who, uh, Carlos probably, not, Gain himself. probably not a bad <laughs> place to hide, really. I guess a nice, spacious car boot. Um, Can you imagine on a roll-on, roll-off uh, <laughs> ferry. Escape Japan in style. Take th- <laughs> ten packets of energy jelly. Hop in the trunk yeah. of Pete Dawson's car and get yeah. sailing for a month around the planet. And a whole load That's of poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh, you've ruined it. You've ruined. Oh, oh. but yeah, looking forward to seeing that. That's going to be amazing. So it should it should arrive in time for Christmas, in theory. Mm. The ultimate gift, right? The ultimate gift, yeah. Um, a, a trip to the Toyota specialist to find out what's happening. <laughs> what's, what's happening to it? Oh, oh man. But that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. Uh, I didn't fill you in on Natsuki's event that happened a few weeks ago. It was good. That's right. Natsuki's I saw event. you kind of like coming around the corner in a, in a video and it looked... I mean, I would say that when you are doing your own filming, it looks all professional. But when someone else is filming you at an event that is not your event, <laughs> and you've remarked yourself that um, you had a bit of the musk of you, uh, musk of, uh, about you uh, in previous years, um, but you do look like Elon Musk cutting around Twitter, just walking around, going, "What Bumbling have we got around. here then? What's going on?" It just felt like it just felt like you were like kind of um, you'd been pulled out of a meeting to have uh, to to take a picture <laughs> with Natsuki and his crew. <laughs> yeah, I came back from the bathroom, turned the corner, and the whole event had stopped to take a photo. Mm. And I came around the corner, and they're all just sitting there in silence. And I just went, ah, jump scared. It was horrible. But it was a good event. I, I saw, I, I was late because I was doing this podcast. I missed the, the all-important Q&A with Natsuki and Joey. And they did too much Volcano. I missed that. But I made them do it again. And it was quite surreal watching Natsuki and Joey bash out a cover of Too Much Volcano. I say cover, they're the real bit. They're, they're the real band, aren't loud. they? Good I, I, <laughs> I saw them do it. I saw them perform it uh, in front of, you know, 60, 70 people. It was really cool. Mm. It was good fun. Glad I went. I think Natsuki enjoyed <laughs> it. He sold a lot of like, I don't know if I have, I, I have, I, I, I do have something. Keep talking. One sec. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, Chris is uh, leaving um, the camera shot that I've got here on, uh, a recording device known as Riverside. It's a, um, a, a, a product Enough that we use to speak. record podcasts over the internet. And, uh, here he is. Here he is. For those of you watching on got? YouTube, you can see it's not even in focus. Is yeah, it a fridge go. magnet or a, or a sticker? I don't know what it is. It's like a... It must be a magnet or it's something... Has it got like a little stand that you sort of stand it up on on something? Yeah. Is it like a, a little a, cutout? Yeah. It's a plastic cutout of Natsuki and I from Mount Fuji mm. from the summit. Nice. Uh, and it that's, says that's July awesome. 26... Uh, 2023, 4.54 a.m. at the summit of Mount Fuji. We climbed Mount Fuji. What a wonderful sunrise. So fucking sunshine. <laughs> so <laughs> you do see it. these things. I've seen like quite a lot of Japanese wrestlers that I follow. They have these little sort of stand-up like cutouts of themselves and they sell yeah, them this after is it. the show. And, you, and it, I guess it kind of sits on your desk and it reminds you of um, someone you know off on the internet climbing Mount Fuji, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody bought them, though. But like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> good. I, Brilliant. I felt a bit bad. So I'd buy Natsuki, one of them. I'd happily, I'd happily put up, my hand in my pocket for that. Well, Nasky turned up with uh, lots of this merchandise, uh, these mm. dodgy <laughs> plastic cutouts. Bits and and then And then Ian, who was running the event and doing the whole thing for Natsky very kindly, he mm. sold uh, some posters of Natsky that he'd made that were very well made and extremely well printed. And right. Ian, I think Ian made a pretty penny selling those posters, and rightly so. Ian <laughs> took the time to create the artwork, sell the posters, run the event. But I remember seeing Natsuki, <laughs> and he was like getting people and being like, "No, no, you buy this," and like <laughs> gesturing them to come to his table and buy stuff from him instead of Ian's poster. It's quite an amusing sight. <laughs> but it went oh. well. I think they had a lot of fun, um, uh, and I think Natsuki's threatening to do another event. In the near future, so we shall see. We Good. shall see. Oh, well, he, he, he'll, he'll one up himself, and he'll maybe he'll sell like big cardboard cutouts that are the, like the size of like a human, maybe of oh, you two at the, at the at the summit of Mount Fuji. Fantastic. I've, yeah, that'll be good. I've still got the Ken Watanabe cardboard cutout lingering in the uh, in the sitting room by the window, <laughs> and it gives jump scares right. everyone that sees it. But uh, we got a story this week from Pepe. He says, "Hello, 
Senorito, Chris, and Amigo Ooh. Pete. Greetings nice. from Pepe from Mexico. I'm a long-time fan, recent listener viewer of your podcast. Today I bring you the most peculiar story from my first trip to Japan. The story took place just outside Osaka Castle, where my best friend and I were chilling around a vending machine, having some Bakari sweat and admiring the astonishing view, when suddenly a curious Japanese man wearing a baseball hat approached us to make some small talk. He asked us where we were from. We were both, uh, we both enthusiastically said that we were Mexicans. To this statement... The man gave us an astonished, an astonished and really happy look and proceeded to take off his hat to show us a tattoo on his forehead that said Los Zetas in a stereotypical <laughs> gang lettering and said to us in broken Spanish, Yo soy uno... I can't, I can't do it, it's the British accent. Yo soy uno Zeta amo Mexico. I'm a Zeta, I love Mexico. To give you context, Los Zetas are one of the deadliest, most powerful and cruel cartels that operate in Mexico. Of course they are. So when he told us that my friend and I, uh, well, we just looked at each other in a bit of confusion and fear as we happily uh, yelled out, yeah, Los Zetas, woo-hoo, and we high-fived and friendly hugged him, just in case he was indeed part of the criminal organisation. <laughs> After that, we probably said goodbye and rushed to the station, hoping that he wouldn't follow us. Thankfully, he didn't, and we all ended up as a quirky, funny story. Uh, to this day, if I haven't uh, lived this story, I would find it pretty hard to believe. But thank you all for the content. Hope you find the story entertaining. All the best, guys. Mm. Pepe. That is quite random. It's a shame the, the chances, guy didn't though? allude to Big it. Big Mexican Why? cartel, and, and he just happened to have that tattooed on his forehead, and that, that's that. You couldn't make that up. That's amazing. And like, I mean, we could all talk about how distasteful it is that. Uh, you know, the romance around these Mexican uh, murderous uh, drug cartels that destroys communities and, and murders no people um, no becomes romance. a becomes like a um, like a, a bit of a brand eventually. Uh, remember that remember there was like um I think the first foldable smartphone from Samsung, the old Z Fold one, I think. Mm. Um somebody who's the big who's the big narco guy who spent more on rubber bands than um, anyone in in history to do up his his dollar bills. He was like he was the subject of of Narcos, the TV show. The, the big guy. I am not the, sure. The main. I'm not, the main I'm not into my guy. crime. Anyway, the main guy. Anyway, um, I think when he died, Carlos something or other. Um, I, I don't know my cartels very well. But anyway, when Carlos he Gain. died, when he was what Wolfgang, <laughs> Carlos Gain. He's back. Carlos gone, not Carlos gone. <laughs> um, but when he when he uh, was assassinated, obviously his. His his legend becomes bigger and bigger, and and they started selling um uh, branded up phones with his face on. Oh my um, god! And selling them as like a as like a not as a Samsung fold. They sold it as insert name of his cartel effectively or his name. Um, and it's just interesting these kind of like really horrible companies become uh, become uh, kind of What's... you know brand names because it's cool and sexy and people enjoy playing Vice City on the PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, whatever next? We're going to be putting fucking yeah. war criminals on the phone. Like, <laughs> they, they probably would. They probably would. The Nokia Goebbels. Like, well, it's just so <laughs> ridiculous. But, I, yeah, yeah. I, it's a shame that we glorify such folks. I don't know. Maybe this guy was Yakuza and he had an appreciation for fellow crime lords in Mexico. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I can only speculate. Um, but I imagine he, he, there's a good chance he was probably affiliated with some Yakuza outfit, right? I think that's a. You reckon? Well, if you get your head bit. tattooed, you would you'd you'd say you're pretty. You're on the fringes of society right away. Yes, yes, you are. Yes, I mean, you are. and I guess, but I guess if you're having uh, like, and I know this from visiting onsens and, and and swimming pools and stuff, and I'm not allowed to swim in them because of my tattoos on my legs. Um, out of leg versus forehead, forehead's way easy to cover up uh, in an onsen because you just fold your hair forward, couldn't you? Like well, he was wearing a baseball over. hat. A baseball yeah. hat. Um, yeah, you'd be fine. Yeah. So, and in an onsen, you do put like the little white towels on your head, so you probably wouldn't know. Yes, you do. yeah, you stick the head tattoo. little little hand towel on your head, right? Yeah, to, uh, exactly. Yeah, that's probably fine. why they're doing it because they all got head tattoos. They're all part of the, <laughs> of the crime gang. My <laughs> lord, Mexico. my lord. Yeah. Well, that's a cool story. I love those little run-ins. Yeah. Those are the stories that are just epic. Like they're really mm. cool. But you never know. You never know who you might meet on your travels around Japan. But what is the story of the week, Mr. Dawson? Fill us in. What's going on in Japan? I'm guessing uh, I understand it's something to do with Japan's ugliest prefecture. <laughs> <That sounds pretty laughs> it certainly bad. is. Uh, Ibaraki. 
your friend and Yay. mine, the Ibaraki boys and girls, uh, have, has reclaimed the dubious honour of being the least attractive of Japan's 47 prefectures, according to an annual survey, uh, one year after losing its title to uh, Saga uh, pre- pre- Prefecture. Uh, in the 2023 survey, Ibaraki was ranked last for the 12th time uh, since the rankings began in 2009. Um, Ibaraki, east of Tokyo, rose to 46th in last year's rankings, but again fell to the bottom of this year's survey as Saga edged it out by garnering 13.8 attractiveness points versus Ibaraki's 13.7. Now, this <laughs> story sounds like we're reviewing how beautiful the people of Ibaraki Prefecture is. It's not. We're talking about how nice the environment is, so to speak. I- Ibaraki mm. has sought to use its uh, notoriety as the least attractive prefecture uh, to promote local tourism, often with tongue-in-cheek efforts. Uh, this year's, uh, this, these, however, have yielded mixed results, despite it being uh, quite close uh, to Japan's Pacific Coast, and indeed um, is a part of Japan's Pacific Coast. Um, the, the tourist attractions, says uh, Aiko uh, Akio rather, Tanaka, pre- uh, president of the Brand Research Institute, it's, it, it's, they basically say that the the uh, opinion and the reputation of Ibaraki Prefecture is improving, uh, but a lot of its tourist attractions aren't being uh, publicised. Chris, have you done many videos from Ibaraki Prefecture? Have you spent that uh, much time <laughs> there? I've, so, I, funnily enough, I did a video in Ibaraki uh, one year ago on the second channel, mm. Chris Abroad channel. And yeah. at the time, I think Ibaraki was ranked either the first or second least attractive prefecture in Japan, like it is now. Yeah. Um, and they they wanted me to promote Ibaraki. It was a sponsored video, but from Ibaraki, you know, they wanted mm. to try and improve the image. And in the video, I don't know that we did that to the places mm. they lined up. We went to a glamping place. Oh, well, that was lovely. It was a cabin in the woods, forest, had a, you know, a sauna. It was lovely. Although, mm. you know, you can kind of do that in a lot of places in Japan. Next up, we went to an abandoned school, that had been mm. converted into a place where you could learn how to make soba. That was kind of interesting, nice, making cool. soba noodles. And then there was another abandoned school. <laughs> I, I went to no it's less than two schools. or three abandoned Good schools God. in one video. Yeah, and this was like, <laughs> this is a state-sanctioned Ibaraki video, and that, this is what they did. They just led me <laughs> to various abandoned schools. And, I, you know, looking back at it, I think they could have done a better job choosing, uh, choosing where we went. But... Mm. Uh, in the last place we went in that video, it was a, this, a, the second abandoned school. And they had this very unique bath. And it was like, you know, some places in Japan are very proud of their hot springs, the fresh water pumped up beneath the ground, boiling, full of nutrients. This school in Ibaraki had a, a fucking metal barrel that looked like, you know, somebody's going to stick the corpse in to melt it in acid. And they, <laughs> they put some what was wooden their big blocks in it. Exactly. It was like Jeffrey Dahmer's bathtub. It was very <laughs> weird. It was insane. <laughs> I, I had to sit in this barrel. Uh, uh, yeah. They filled it with water and set a fire mm. like beneath it to boil the mm. water. Mm. And it took... They're having you on, mate. They're, they're well, laughing it looked, at you. <laughs> it took like 45 minutes for the water to heat up through fire. And then right. I got in the water and the point of pleasant warm water to boiling <laughs> water began very fast because it was reaching yeah. that point of no return. So we had to stop the fire. But even then, the smoke from the fire nearly caused me to pass out from like carbon monoxide, bloody poisoning, whatever. And so mm. it was like this torturous bath. And I, I was <laughs> in the video, I'm like in the bath going, yeah, Ibaraki, isn't it? And I, <laughs> they made me <laughs> cut that line from the video. They made me cut that line, um, rightly <laughs> so. And, but like, just, yeah, Ibaraki. It's just a Ibaraki. weird. I've made two videos there. And like, mm. Neither of them are, have done the best job painting it in, a, in the best light. I don't they, think it's a bad It sounds place. like they don't help themselves, Chris, to be honest. They don't. They don't. No. They really don't. And they've got like... Naughty Ibaraki. The, the, um, they've got the Ushku Daibutsu, which is, I think, the, the, high, the tallest bronze Buddha statue in Japan. Right. Uh, which is very impressive. Right, that's cool. Is it worth going there just for that? Probably not. But it is really yeah, cool to see. Have you seen, have yeah. you seen the Buddha? Get in the barrel. <laughs> yeah. Buddhas and barrels. Tell. That's Ibaraki. Yeah. And the first time I went there... <laughs> Years ago, like, you know, five, six years ago, I did a video. I did a, had to make pottery, and it was mm. just a disaster. I made this, like, flaccid vase, flaccid vase. It was, disa- it was just disastrous. And then <laughs> I went to some boring sake brewer. It was just really bad. So, yeah, I can't tell you what's good in Ibaraki, apart from the Daibutsu Buddha. 
That's there's, it, a, isn't it? there's a there's a guy who's all over YouTube at the moment, a Japanese guy, and his kind of like uh, his mo is going up to randomers in Tokyo, uh, and he's he he's recommending all my recommends all the time. My partner and other people send me his stuff, and it's just all YouTube shorts, nothing longer than you know five yeah. minutes. But and he's just going, "What's it like being mixed race in Japan?" <laughs> it's oh. like everyone, <laughs> "What's it? What's it like being mixed race in Japan? Is it weird?" Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> and he goes, what's, what's it like being, what's it like, would you, be? and 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 he knows his audience, he knows it's like slightly salacious, so he's like, he's just asking Japanese women, is, is it okay for men to sleep with prostitutes? <laughs> it's just oh all gosh. this shit. And and I understand, like, you know, they're big hitting questions and people are like that stuff. I mean, surprising amount of women are fine with um, men and their partners just sleeping around with sex workers, which, fine, sex workers are real work, but... Interesting vibes. Interesting. <laughs> it, 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 it just sounds like men in Japan uh, and their sexual desires just very much. Oh, it's just a pain in the ass. I'll go out with you, but I just can't be out. Just go see a sex worker. I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered with that side of things. You're, you're weird. It's strange. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, 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 what he needs to be doing is going to Ibaraki. Going, Clearly. What's it like being? Ibaraki, what's it like being? What's it like seeing a mixed race sex worker in Ibaraki? <laughs> it's bad. But this I mean, guy's lost, huge. When I was when I was there in Ibaraki on the way back after finishing the shoot, I uh, I got pulled over by the police for not coming to a complete and utter stop at a T junction. Yes, I was I was sort of slowed down. My wheels yeah. were still turning, and then I went right because it's a, yeah. a country Class, road. I mean, it, it's something that you visibility. don't experience in the UK, but you do experience in the US and Japan. They're really really hot on the got to stop before you start kind of vibes nothing better to do in the mm. in the fields of ibaraki i suppose the yeah. thing ibaraki is most famous for is one of the worst nuclear disasters nuclear accidents in japan mm. uh it's, it's a horrible story i think it was uh 1999 1997 uh right. 1999 some guys who were working at a nuclear uh, facility producing mm. like like uranium rods for nuclear reactors they accidentally mixed the wrong uh, quantities of uranium, or I can't remember exactly. I'm not a nuclear physicist. So I can't remember what it was they 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 poured in, but they poured too mm. much of the uh, u- urinal nitrate. There you go. They poured too much in, and it created right. a nuclear reaction. And one of the guys who was pouring it in, uh, I think his name his name was Hisashi Auchi, Auchi, sorry, Auchi. Uh, <laughs> It, yeah. was, it was One actually, yeah. Or <laughs> yeah, it's an ironic name, but he he had the just the worst possible ending, and it's uh, mm. I think there's a good documentary on it or a good book, but they tried to keep him alive for about eighty days, uh, oh. eighty three days. Oh. They tried to keep him alive. Well, he was dead the moment he had poured it in. The, yeah. the, 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 yeah. the like gamma rays shot straight through his body, mm. blew his chromosomes in half, so his body couldn't produce like couldn't reproduce any cells um, right. and they try to keep him alive and oh my god like if you see some photos of this this poor guy they gave him blood transfusions skin grafts yeah. all sorts of things but and, and every done that, your, doctor all the skin every just doctor falls would off. be yeah every doctor was just like there's just no there's just no way but i mean you don't have you know you don't you don't you can't have that decision to sort of make to to, to end someone's life but good god that's that sounds absolutely horrific like it's just a, a, well i know they were you know, they were trying to do their best and try and save him. A noble effort, mm. but I think he mm. went too far down the realms of sort of it's scientific, gone. you know, exploration and investigation. Like, mm. oh, what, how can we keep him alive? But, mm. you know, it's a phenomenal story. I recommend you looking it up. It's, uh, but that, I always associate that with Ibaraki, the Tokaimura nuclear incident. Uh, mm. And so, yeah, Ibaraki. Yeah, I'd, but I'm sure there's some good things there. I know the coastal area is nice. I know a good few people from there. I just went driving. I did some drifting uh, a few weeks ago on Ludwig, Ludwig's, Ludwig's YouTube channel. Mm. And uh, my driver, uh, Alistair, she was from there. She was really nice. So that's the good bit of Ibaraki. Great drift drivers and a fantastic Buddha statue. But it's unfortunate mm. that yet again, Ibaraki's been dealt the hand of being the ugliest prefecture in Japan. I think it's not necessarily the case that Ibaraki's bad. I think it's just every other prefecture has one thing that people get excited about, right? It's got one thing. Uh, mm. And Ibaraki does not have that, unfortunately. So, and, f- and try as I might, I can't find it either. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment, guys, with the stories, comments, and question in the fax machine. Wow.
And we're back with the fact machine. What have we got this week from our listeners, Mr. Dawson? Fill us in. Oh, sorry. I'm just recovering from um, looking that that man. Uh, good oh, God. No. Um, dear, yeah, yeah, I was going to... Uh, you know, I've seen some stuff. You know, I grew up in you know the the era of Orgrish and some horrific stuff on 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 there. But well, from good Hartlepool. God, yeah. <laughs> from Hartlepool. That's, I mean, it's, it's what worse, my body looks like anyway. Um, it's dear worse Candy than nuclear Man. reaction. Yeah, Hartlepool Street. <laughs> dear Candyman night. Chris and Pazuzu Pete. I went to see the woman in black quite recently. So um, uh, there's the, the 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 character in that looks a bit like Pazuzu. Um, I'm currently studying <laughs> Japanese and Chinese at university and I have recently befriended some Japanese exchange students. As a representative of our nation, I felt it necessary to teach them about British slang during our outing to JD Weatherspoons. <laughs> oh, One of my new Japanese friends showed me pictures from their class. They were learning common British phrases such as, you alright mate? And oh, I'm naked, uh, along with another, another few uh, expressions that I uh, had never heard in conversation. Afterwards, I realised how important learning slang is uh, while staying and living in the UK. I was wondering if you guys had ever taught your non-British friends about the slang we use here in the UK. And uh, in Chris's case, your students. Thanks a million, uh, Jacob from the United Kingdom. Um, you're obviously, Chris, someone who um, owned a book of British swear words that you were more than happy to uh, share <laughs> with. Uh, some of the, uh, I think your, your your Japanese teacher at one point very much enjoyed uh, the gift of the F word here and there. Yeah, I, I remember when I made the video teaching swear words to Japanese people with that book, Tadashi Fakun mm. Skycutter. What a great book. Uh, mm. I just remember my favorite bit was where the science teacher, a really cool guy called Chonon Sensei, who spoke English very well, is just a clip of him holding the book going, I'm trusting you with the drugs. Don't fuck me over. I was like, <laughs> that's right, that's exactly. cracking slang. That's important <laughs> slang that you need to know. Um, <laughs> I don't think I ever taught my students like I'm knackered. Uh, mm. I did teach them, you're right, mate, because it broke them. They they, they didn't learn in, in their like, English class. They didn't learn that words, when you put words together fast, it sounds different to, mm. to like, you know. It's, we don't go, how are you today, Pete? You sort of go, how are you doing, Pete? And I mm. taught them that. I was like, we would sort of say in British English, how are you doing, mate? How are you yeah. doing, mate? Because they just couldn't comprehend that. I'd be like, oh, how are you doing? Yeah. And then the conversation's done because nobody gets taught that in Japan. So I taught them that. I can't remember what the, the term is for, what you know, compressing words into like a new sound, colloquial British English. But uh, I tried my best and it was, mm. it was, it was a waste of time. And I regret doing that. <laughs> uh, we've got a story here uh, from... Uh, Juong, Juong from the land of AK. What, Zhong, what is this? I think Juong, Zhong. Zhong Zhong. from Canada, think, yes. Canadian Vietnamese, maybe. Uh, hello, Chris and Pete. With the release of Chris's new book, and as a new listener to the show, I would like to ask a few generic book related questions. First and foremost, do you guys read books, fiction or non fiction? Second, what are some of your favorite books? And lastly, are you reading anything at the moment? I have recently picked up Anna uh, Karenina's. By sorry, Anna Karenina Anna by Karina. Leo Tolstoy yeah. and yeah. Anarchy Ooh. by Erico uh, Malice Tester. Uh, both are amazing in very different ways. Thank you for reading my question. Have a nice day. Pete, what are you reading? Is it nothing? Is it the Abroad in Japan book? How very rude. I um, You don't read. Uh, I didn't realise that your um your uh, book Abroad in Japan by uh, Chris Broad in Japan um was in the we 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 not Weatherspoon <laughs> what a stone the spoons, whatever the pub you know, whatever book whatever <laughs> book uh, shop they've got um and like you're literally a sarcastic fried chicken enthusiast is the opening thing <laughs> on the on the uh, on the actual table displaying all of your uh, displaying all of your oh. all of your wares Lovely. Sarcastic lovely. fried chicken enthusiast, which is lovely stuff. Um, I'm a big John Le Carre fan, to be honest. I like uh, a good ah. spy novel. Um, Tinker Tailor Soldier Tink Spy. Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy and all the rest of them. I will frequently on holiday um, start to read a, a, um, a, a, a book by John Le Carre and then realise that I've already read it. And I will have read about <laughs> two thirds of it before I realise. Oh, no. So for me, it's, it's, it's great. I love it. <laughs> I love doing that, me. I, I haven't read a book in a long time, actually. I, the, I think the last book I read might have been by... Uh, it might have been like The the People Who Eat Darkness, the book mm. by Richard Lloyd Parry on um, Lucy Blackman, the British girl who tragically murdered here in Japan. Uh, or his other book, The Ghost of the Tsunami. Um, yeah, I, I it's a shame. I do like reading, but I've I've become... I'm just broken. I'm a broken man, Pete. I, I cannot hold a physical book and read it for longer than like five minutes. My brain doesn't work. I, I've become <laughs> like a TikTok viewer 
I, I have not got the attention span. I don't know, it sucks. I would love to be able to read, but something's wrong with my attention span. I just break. Mm. What's the cure? I don't know. <laughs> What's the cure? What's the cure? Um, I don't know. I would, I would recommend, actually, speaking of um, Richard Lloyd Parry's uh, book, I think it's called, oh, he's got another book, and I think it might be called In the Time of Madness, um, which is a very good uh, book. About, What's that about? It is about Indonesia and um, the warring um, tribal um, forces there, and it's like insane some of the stuff that happens there and uh you know him being a, a reporter on the ground uh, at that time mm. uh well well recommended by half of a branch man podcast <laughs> he's a i mean he's a he's an author for, he's a sort of journalist for the times and he actually mm. reviewed my book uh and it scared the hell out of me to have like a, a, a very good journalist and author review right. your book it's kind of like uh -oh, awesome this is this is the bit uh -oh. where it's like disappointingly written, astonishingly poor. But actually, the review was uh, was nice. He described me huh. as uh, like a friend talking down the pub. I think that's a compliment. I don't really know. It's a compliment. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. That's good. That. Yeah. What you're like, yeah, yeah. Good. He didn't like that. The, the, he he gave one criticism, which is important. Mm. Uh, which burns. Criticize. Which you've, you you carved into your arm with a knife. <laughs> he <d> <laughs> but it's not he bothering him. Doesn't bother me. He said, sometimes I descended into cliche, which I don't deny. Mm. Uh, the ending, yeah. the last line of the book is something like, there's always one more secret lying in wait for you around the corner in the right. land of the rising sun. Something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, you know, descended into cliche, which is kind What's of wrong I with wanted... a cliche. It's a nice jacket. But the, warm. The, the very water, <laughs> the very books, the very bookshop water stones you just talked about going in and seeing the book. They took that quote because they loved it clearly and ran with it. And it was when I walked in, that was everywhere. There's always one yeah. more secret lying in store around the corner in the land of the rising sun. I mm. don't know, I, but I, I was very relieved when that review came out. I heart skipped a beat when I saw that he reviewed the book. So, yeah, it's it's nice when someone you respect and um, appreciate like returns. You know, that's amazing. The compliment. He's a hell of a writer. Say, yeah, well, yeah very know. very good. We got uh, time for one more question. This is Hi Crunky Chris and Picari Pete. Last time I was in Japan was back in 2006. I went to e Edo, sorry, Edo Wonderland. Edo Wonderland. Oh, <laughs> Edo <one> Wonderland. Of... <laughs> <laughs> Boogie Wonderland. I started every day of the cycle with Connor. When I did that cycle, I started every day with that song mm. on my bike. It was the first song I listened to, <laughs> Boogie Wonderland. It's the ultimate way to like, get fired up before you <laughs> want to break your legs on a bicycle. Uh, one of the best theme parks I've ever visited, Edo Wonderland, uh, a real highlight of my holiday. Does it still exist? And if so, would you ever consider visiting? I think mm. there used to be two, but I fear it may have closed down. Uh, all the best, Austin Fallen. I, will I, I don't know what Edo Wonderland is. Do you know what Edo Wonderland is, Pete? I've Have I've given it, it a Google. I've read some of the uh, some of the reviews on Google. Uh, the old hag at the rice cracker shop has a bad attitude, says uh, somebody on the reviews. <laughs> 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 uh, I love it's, reviews it's, in Japan. I love it. Written in, I love written in Japanese reviews. as well. Very very rude, really. Um, I think it's kind of like one of those kind of like oldie timey kind of like it's like Beamish. If you've ever been to Beamish in the northeast of England, uh, where it's basically like what life was like in mining times in Victorian <laughs> era, um, here it's very much what was it like in Edo times? Uh, here's a ninja doing a backflip. So it's very, I think it's <laughs> it's it's very focused towards children and people who really like rudely served rice crackers, I suppose. Yeah, I, I do you know where it is? Do you find out where? I think it's in Saitama. Oh, mm, it's in Niko in Tochigi. Niko. Uh, Tochigi. Mm, yeah. No, I, if, I, Nikko's still the one big tourist place in Japan I've never gone near. I've never mm. been there. Have you been there? Have you been to Nikko? No, no, Nikko? I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've no, I've no, I've no cause to use it, as they say. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, <laughs> apparently where Tokugawa Ieyasu is buried there, I think, the, uh, the Shogun himself, but yeah, I don't really right. know what's, what's there in Nikko. It's sort of in between, Wonderland, like, clearly. Niigata, and it's, if you're trying to get a Niigata, it's like halfway in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> halfway. Yeah. I'll, I'll have a poke around at some point. Mm. Keep the stories, right. questions, comments coming in, guys, to broadjapanpodcast at gmail.com or write a comment in YouTube below. But for now, no matter where you might be out there in the big wide world, have yourself a great few days. We'll see you right back here to do it all over again on the Abroad Japan podcast. Bye for now.